In 2004, I walked away from my economic development consulting firm to give head to my dream of creating a new food store. It opened in 2005, and 12 months later I closed it. My business failed, and I felt as if I failed along with it. Hi, I'm Gavin, and these are the Coffee Conspiracies, my rather non-typical series on starting and running real businesses. In this episode, I want you to consider the worst. The worst is when you not only lose your investment, but you lose more than you can afford to lose. In hindsight, my mistakes were obvious. I overinvested, and I didn't have enough cash to keep going. Sure, there were terrible things that happened, but I was unprepared to fight them. During 2005, South Africa suffered a series of crippling electricity failures that sent many businesses to the wall. I suffered through four weeks of sporadic electricity supply during which I had to keep replacing perishable food or have nothing to sell. Every day, government ministers would appear on television to explain that everything was sorted and supply would shortly resume. The next morning, the electricity would fail, and by the afternoon, I would be on the phone to suppliers ordering new stock while my staff threw away the existing produce that had been exposed to the summer heat without refrigeration. I burned through my capital in four weeks. It took months for my supply chain to recover. Purchasing patterns changed, and no one came into my store. It was over before it had begun. And yet if I had obeyed my own rules, if I would cut my investment to 10% of what I eventually spent, I could still have done what I wanted and electricity failure would have hurt, not killed. I wouldn't wish what happened to me to happen to anyone. I did it to myself. My choice. My responsibility. What can you learn? No, not how to avoid it. Everything else in this series is about that. Take a moment. Think about losing everything more than you can afford, that you'll get a job to pay off your debts and still not cover them, that you may need to declare personal bankruptcy. What are the laws around that in your country? In South Africa, murderers and rapists are treated better before the law than a bankrupt. In most cases, you'll want to avoid it. Don't be frightened. It's not actually happening right now. We're just thinking about it. And be aware of the circumstances in which your business could be failing. You will have stopped sleeping, eating, even talking, you will feel non-stop dread. I got maybe two to three hours of sleep a night. I'd wake up, go to the bathroom, throw up. I lost 15 kilos that year, and each morning I headed to my store and I opened. I went through the routine of running it, but my business had become a zombie, and so was I. Both the living dead. What was a large circle of friends shrunk to a core group. People who fed me when I couldn't afford food, who bailed me out so I could restructure my debts, who were there for me. I don't know if you've ever done a sailing course or gone skydiving. The safety routines are very simple and very precise. For skydiving, should anything fail, there is one procedure. Cut your chute, pull your safety. Don't think any more than that, just do it. All dangerous procedures have very simple and fixed safety routines. The reason is because during an emergency, you cannot trust your judgment. You will be emotionally and physically out of your depth. All you have are the simple emergency rules. Running your own business is the most dangerous thing you are ever likely to do. The consequences of it going wrong can put your life and those of the people you care about in jeopardy. You need to do two things. Minimize the risk you're taking in the first place, which is what I've discussed in previous episodes, and then, should everything go wrong, have a clear plan to identify when you are beyond recovery and what you're going to do when you walk away. Your objective is to survive to uh, to fight again tomorrow, which means that you may need to walk away before all your options are exhausted. First step, identify the moment when you know you need to end things. That isn't easy. Is what you're going through a downturn for your whole industry, or is it just you? Will the market recover? Can you hold out for however many months it takes? There is no straightforward answer but maybe the best is to put aside sufficient cash or capital to allow you to start again from scratch, but from a much smaller base. The moment it looks as if you might need to break into that safety fund, and if it's merely to keep going, then that could be a moment to shut things down. Many people run at this moment, taking their lost cash and heading out the door, staff, suppliers and creditors unpaid. That's a terrible idea. It is also immoral. Your choice. Your responsibility. The first people to talk to are your staff. They will already know things are bad. 
tell them you are closing, but that you are doing this over a few months. Time to wind things down and for your staff to find new jobs. Help them to the best of your ability. This is not just because it is the honourable thing to do, but because they will remember and they may help you in future. If you intend to remain in the same industry, you need all the friends you can get. You will have several obligations, including your lease, any suppliers who may have given you credit, and any loans you're paying off. Don't tell them you intend to default, because they may trigger your insolvency against your will. Try restructure your debts into a single long-term package. Sure, over the long term, you'll pay far more in interest, but over the short term, you can afford the payments. Find a new tenant. Pay off your suppliers. When the time comes, close the doors and walk away. And tomorrow, the sun will come up. I can't say how things will work out for you. I walked away with nothing. Well, not quite nothing. There was a young woman who was going through a difficult patch in her own life. She would visit me in my empty shop and we would have coffee. Two years later we were married. I wouldn't go through that again. It still hurts. I still have the occasional nightmares, but neither would I give it up. A few months later, I was walking in a supermarket. I had no money, but I needed to walk amongst other businesses to see that life continues. One of my suppliers came up to me. She was a fearsome woman. She suffered from emphysema and had a stand with oxygen on it that went with her everywhere. She had supplied my packaging and was used to businesses which ran up debts and then failed. I think that is what made her so scary, that sense that she was waiting for your business to fail and for you to do her wrong. She took my hand and stared at me for a long time. I wanted to say thank you, she said. I, I shook my head, I, I didn't understand. Because you paid us. You paid all of us. You did the honourable thing. Thank you. And that's maybe the last thing I want to leave you for this episode. About the only thing we have is ourselves. It is what is left when everything else has been scrubbed away. And tomorrow you still have to look into that person's soul and ask yourself whether you're comfortable with what you see there. For today, no matter how bad things are, you have honour. And tomorrow, the sun also rises. Until next time, let's share a coffee.